Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get are done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. If you're a Michigan baby boomer, the wonderful Michigan outdoors meant worlds unexplored for you as a child. And it also meant that more than likely you were parked in front of the black and white TV Thursdays at 8 p.m. to catch Morton F's Michigan Outdoors. Today on the show, we visit with the children of that broadcast pioneer, Morton F, to see what it was like growing up with Mr. Michigan Outdoors as your father. But first, we visit with a Clio, Michigan man who constructed from scratch a two-man submarine in which he planned to explore the depths of the Great Lakes. It's coming up on Michigan Magazine. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. What began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon. Carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more. Plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Hingeman Acres, Canoe Livery and Resort on M33, just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. We're down here in beautiful Clio, Michigan. My hometown, my old stomping grounds, and I'm with Russ Brown. Good to meet you, Dale. Nice to meet you. By golly, I've heard so much about you, and it looks to me like you've got a project that a lot of us would like to try and do. Myself, I love the water, but a little bit leery of what... You built a submarine. You folks out there watching right now, Russ has built this submarine, and it does work. Yes, it does. It does sink. Yes. And comes back up. Yes. <laughs> Sinking was a problem the first year, but we Sinking got that worked a, out. Yeah. Sinking was a problem. Yep. What do you call this, Russ? Well, we haven't got a name for it yet. It's just Great Lakes Submarines, what I'm trying to set up. I built it for the Great Lakes, but one of my problems is I need a very large support ship, something to put it on the ship, take it to the dive sites, and take it off and do your dive, and then put it back on to take it out. How, how did it all get started for us? Well, I've been a diver since about 67, uh, and then in 94 I had a boat accident. And a friend of mine, Mike Gage, was building a small sub, the one-man sub, uh -huh. the smallest sub in the world, matter of fact. And uh, I helped him finish that up, helped him take that out and run it. Mm -hmm. And we figured there could be a market for a larger sub for filming the gas lines and filming the electric lines and filming your shipwrecks. Or uh, There's a lot of emergency work for the sheriff and state police. You can look for a lot of old for underwater... Uh Wrecks. Underwater wrecks. The shipwrecks, the airplanes, whatever. Yeah. Since I've been involved in it, a lot of people have contacted me for different projects, but I wasn't ready and I don't have a big ship yet. So uh -huh. at this point, it's just kind of sitting there until I can figure some way to get her out in the Great Lakes. The chamber is half inch hardened boilerplate, which is equivalent to, they told me, about one inch thick. Uh, it's got five windows in it. It's got two below the surface, and it's got five in the conning tower. Uh, it's uh, got a camera, and we're looking at placing about four more cameras underneath it. This is designed to run into anything full bore, won't hurt it. When you say run into anything full bore, you mean... Well, if you were underwater and have a little accident bumping into a shipwreck or anything, this front is uh, still great, basically, just for strength. Uh -huh. give, you, give, the, give a little water flow. But the cameras are underneath there, okay. and I've got some lights under there. Oh, I see. And there's an emergency lift bag that goes in there that can be operated from inside the sub. Yeah. So to get it out of the Great Lakes, you got what? Is, what do you have to do to get it out into the Great Lakes? All I have to do is have a large enough boat to put this on. This weighs 6,500 pounds. Could you put this on a trailer? I've got the trailer. Got I can take trailer. it anywhere. 
If you wanted at Mackinac City in three hours, I could be there. In Mackinac City? Three hours. Now, but the problem is what? Is launching it? No. Uh, the problem is the weight. My problem is uh, it's electric. So if you're in the Great Lakes, you can't power it to where you're going. You have to take it to where you're going. I got and then you that. need a large vessel to do that. Uh -huh. Uh, the small lakes, we just put it in and we handle the small lakes with no problem. Okay, just back it up and... Back it up, run her down in the water, and then, then away we go. You've had it in Otter Lake? I've had it in Otter Lake probably 10, 15 times in Phil Pansy's Pond and over to Lake Benton once. Uh-huh. What is it you find interesting about... Um, what, what, do you, what, are you, what are you looking for? I mean, uh, you want to get in the Great Lakes to look for what? Uh, or any of these places? Is there something you're looking for in particular when you go down? Or? Well, for the fun, uh, I've dove the Regina. I've dove uh, the Nordmere and uh, a couple of your small ships over in Lake Michigan. And, a, and the one in uh, the Kiwi and Lake Charlevoix. And I've got uh, four kids. They're all married and they're all certified divers. Okay. So we like our boating. We've got... Mm -hmm. We got boating plan. How deep can you go with this? Well, we started out figuring out our plans for a thousand foot sub. And with the ABS standards, it's two to one. That made it a half inch steel. Well, once we got building it, we figured we're gonna need so much weight, so we put it into the sub. So now we have half inch boilerplate. Then our reinforcement rings are uh, double, or one by four inches uh -huh. by quarter. There's three of them. Then the windows are backed. They're an eight inch pipe, half inch pipe, backed with a, a one inch by one inch ring. And the windows are about the weakest spot on it. And that's two inches thick by eight inches. So they're good for what we figured out is close to 6,000. 6,000 feet. Yeah, but it's built for 1,000. What's Russ gonna do next then uh, with this project well, that he's got going? Well, next April it's going to Clear Lake in Atlanta with all my kids and maybe a couple other divers. And if I have to buy or rent somebody with an underwater camera, I want some underwater footage of it. Yeah. And even my wife got in this and drove this and she just loved it. Took her about 15 seconds yeah. to learn how to operate it. <laughs> then I couldn't get her out till the batteries were gone. Now when you go out and you submerge, um, do you have divers that go along beside you or you check out and make sure everything is kosher? I, I figure it's a, it's a four-man crew. It's two in the sub, then we need a support boat and something. And we always mark the sub with a float so they know where we are. Uh -huh. Once you drop out of sight, you're gone. Yeah. They're sitting on shore, you got a clue where you're at. But if that little float's out there, they know right where you are. Yeah. But if you were diving a shipwreck, at that point you would drop the float at the shipwreck and then you would dive in the area so they would know where you are. Uh-huh. You know? Okay. Uh, so that's that's what you are wanting to do eventually. Is to I'm going to be doing it. It's not a it's not an issue though. I want to. <laughs> You're going to be. Well, that's a positive spin. You were talking about the mechanics of this. Uh, what powers it? Uh, a battery. It's got uh, six Xide batteries in it. Okay, and explain that to me when you say six batteries. Um, they're deep cycle, vent free, and they're, they're inside the sub. And I got okay. one plug. I plug it in, charge them all up, unplug it, and away we go. Does it recharge itself some way, or do you have no. to bring them out to recharge? So how good, no, how long uh, you just plug it in. You don't take them out. Okay. So uh, four to six hours, depending on how you're using it. Uh, the vertical thrusters are, say you come across an object, you just hit the thrusters, and you go up, and you keep right on going. You go past the object, you go right on down, and you go do what you're, good, what you're doing. Okay. And uh, submarines with ailerons, delta's all aileroned up. Yeah. Ailerons are nice, but they only work if you're moving. I can sit right still and just adjust this thing in any way. I, this thing will tilt or go sideways. Here. This deck is so stable in the water, two or three people can get up there and walk all around it, don't even tilt. But don't. No, it's like a big raft. I wanted it so you could get out of the sub when you're in the lake. And Delta and the little ones and everything I see, you know, not your 50 passengers, but yeah. your little one and two men subs, yeah. they have to jerk them right out of the water to get in and out. They kind yeah. of seal you up. You can't unseal yourself. Yeah, right. This one here, I can pop to the surface, pop the hatch. That's why the conning tower is a little taller. Yeah. It don't hurt a thing because in the water, the air displacement makes it zero, and it actually works like a rudder to hold it up because the displacement is higher than the weight. You started with a tanks more or yeah. less. Yeah, well we started with a flat piece of flat steel that was rolled in Bay City yeah. by Dunright. They did a really nice job for us. 
I bought the end caps in uh, Grayling, I believe it was, and they're three quarters thick elliptic ends, and the end, the end, the hatch is three quarters elliptic. The hap, hatch weighs about between 80 and 90 pounds, uh -huh. and from inside the sub, that's a tough lift, oh. standing straight up yeah. over your head because it's so tall. But Dave Smith, so, my support yeah. crew, that's why I call them uh, builders, crew, pilots, whatever. He comes over one day with a set of springs on it. He works at a, a spring factory in, in Saginaw. He said, try this. You can see how it just yeah. opens and closes itself. It's just yeah. simple as can be. That, that eliminated another problem. Yeah. So um, you've had, a, quite a, you know, you've had some interesting people work with you on this. So. Yeah, my crew, I love my crew. They, they take care of me. Well, on that note, I want to say this, Russ. It has been a pleasure for this guy to come down here to meet you and to learn more about what you're doing. I know nothing about submarines, but I'm a little more enlightened today because of your information and for what you've been doing here. So thanks for being part of Michigan Magazine. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. There's adventures around every turn, and if you're looking for something for you and the entire family, be sure and visit the Cedar Valley Golf Course and the Wild Frontier Fun Park on Weaver Road in Cummins. Play 18 holes of world-class golf at the beautifully maintained golf course, Cedar Valley, tucked away amongst the hardwoods of northern Michigan, and at the same time, let others in the family enjoy themselves at the adjacent Wild Frontier Fun Park with carnival rides, a batting cage, bumper cars, and a 19-hole mini golf course. Check them out online. It's a northern Michigan destination. Well, it was, uh, there was a lot of pressure to learn how to fish. <laughs> I, do, I think that probably is one of my earliest memories yeah. is the old uh, cabin that we had up on the Asabo just outside of Grayling. Uh -huh. uh, going down into the river, he'd make me go down with him early in the morning and sit on a log while he probably did the thing he loved more than anything else in the world, and that was fly fishing. Fly fishing. That was, that was his true love. Yeah. And we'd sit and just... I just enjoyed watching the river and, and watching the wildlife along mm -hmm. the river. But he uh, usually caught breakfast for us every morning. <laughs> Is and, that right? And then uh, in, in the afternoon, it was time to learn how to cast. And I was not, I guess I was not really a very willing student, but I will never forget the 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock uh -huh. uh, with the fly rod. And um, we spent a lot of time up there. What a lot of folks may not have known about your dad was that uh, he really wasn't much of a deer hunter. No, he wasn't. And that surprised me, too, because he took me out in the field with him uh, uh, one day during deer season. And I really didn't want to go. Uh, and I did, wasn't aware that he was not going to shoot a deer. And we went out and sat sort of in a hidden blind by a fence and uh, uh, the deer started coming up and, and I whispered to him, how can you shoot these beautiful animals? And he just looked at me and he said, shh, I can't. This, I just want you to watch them. Isn't and some? we just watched them come yeah. over and jump the fence and it was, yeah. it was, that was the first time I yeah. really realized that he wasn't into shooting them. He was a man who loved nature. Very much. What has he instilled in you? Oh, he's left a tremendous legacy, I think, for me. He's, he's opened up a world of travel for me. Um, he, he, started, uh, he started me off filming with 35 millimeter. I'm not doing any video, but he started 
having me take a lot of pictures on my trips mm -hmm. and then I didn't really realize why he was doing it but he kept saying remember when you take these pictures you've got to have a story in mind remember to shoot for a story mm -hmm. and when I did get home he started we started going through my pictures and he mm -hmm. was setting me up unknown <laughs> to me to do yeah. to do some uh, uh, slide presentations, yeah, yeah. which um, I have done on some yeah. of the trips that I've done. Will it be, if you can think of one particular instance that stands out in your mind that uh, is like a clinging vine in a way, but is very memorable of your dad? Just walking in the woods and having him open my eyes to, the, to nature. nature uh, and to the state of Michigan. I, yeah. He has made the state of oh. Michigan a very special place for me. Yeah. And uh, no matter where I go... And for us, yeah, the same way. Um, I will always come back. I could never live anywhere but here. And I, the, yep, the Upper Peninsula and the northern part oh. of the Lower, I just... Um, there isn't enough time for me in this area. <laughs> and, and I spend a lot of time in marshes and... and yeah. uh, wildlife refuges and yeah. I always think of him when I'm there because it's just you know that's, that's so much of him. To, yeah. The outdoors was a genuine part of Mort Neff. When Mort died August the 15th 1990 he was acting chairman of a campaign to create an outdoor educational center for the kids at Camp Daggett on Walloon Lake near Petoskey. Mort never saw the completion of the center but the inspiration and legacy he left after his passing will live on in the new name of the center now called the Mortneff Outdoor Education Center. Here on the shores of Walloon Lake on a beautiful autumn morning is where we talked with Mort's son, Jay. What were some of the most memorable, if you can pick one out, of the whole, your lifetime with your dad? Ooh, gee, that's a really hard question. I think maybe probably the most memorable periods in my life were the summers that we spent out in Goodhart on the shores of Lake Michigan. Every year we would come up and, and spend our summers there and uh, being on the beach and sailing, which is something I, I do very actively to this day, that was something my dad taught me in, in swimming and just being in the outdoors. So when you grow up in a wonderful place on the shores of Lake Michigan with the woods and the sand and the beaches, I was just, I never ran out of things to do. And I would say with my dad, that was probably the most memorable time, summers, summers on Lake Michigan out there in Goodhart. One of the most important things my dad thought was to educate people about the outdoors that way. Uh, there wouldn't be any ignorance about what outdoors is about, what sportsmanship is about. And uh, the Morton F. Outdoor Education Center really was uh, a great way to do that. Uh, besides having the summer program here at Camp Daggett and this wonderful setting on Walloon Lake, uh, Sea North has come in and they're doing a winter program where the kids from local schools will be brought in and taught all sorts of things about the outdoors, conservation, the ecosystem. It's really a, a really neat project. It was an idea and project Mort was extremely committed to, to educate and inform the children so they would learn to enjoy the Michigan outdoors with a deep abiding respect. A respect I felt firmly instilled in Mort's own children and those that knew him personally. While Jay and I walked the grounds of Camp Daggett, thoughts of all Mort had done for the state of Michigan came flooding into my mind. At that instant, I recalled that interview with Mort the year before his death when I got the chance to thank him personally for all that he had done for the people of Michigan, to which he replied, What they've done for me, Dell. what they've done for me. Great people. I've got a million golden memories, all made up of people. People in the audience of Michigan Outdoors, and I'll never forget it. Well, we thank you for letting us come up here and talk to you today. And we wish you many more happy birthdays. Thank you. Good luck to you, Dell. I'll be looking for the man with a hat. <laughs> Thanks for joining us along Michigan's back roads. With fall officially here, we'd like to invite you to the big Halloween party at Coopersville Old West Town in Oscoda County. This ghost town amusement park celebrates the season with fun food and costume excitement, free admission, and all donations will go back to the community to help alleviate area hunger and to those going through hard times. It's October the 29th at Coopersville on Fire Tower Road in Oscoda County between Lewiston and Luzerne. Email us for directions. Have a wonderful week. See you here next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. 
Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. The Cedar Tavern and Grill of Lockton, where friends come to meet friends and families come for delicious food and a wholesome atmosphere. Come relax with your favorite beverage or bring the crew for a great meal and live entertainment. It's happening now at the Cedar of Lockton. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Flu season. Be prepared. Get your immunizations now at Rose City Drug, your one-stop pharmacy, home health care, and medical supply outlet. Offering a variety of on-site immunizations. Walk-ins are, of course, welcome. Call now for more information. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com. Thank you. 